So this is a brief uh, story about how, how all the fun stopped for the creatures before 65 million years ago. And it centers on the Yucatan Peninsula. By now everyone I think knows that uh, a large asteroid crashed into, large by um, crashing into Earth standards, crashed into uh, the Yucatan Peninsula. And that's actually a, um, a um, gravity map of the uh, impact crater. So we, we see the impact it had on Earth. So a, a drill was placed out there to get a core of the material and find out um, if they could piece together what happened in that, uh, in that part of the ocean. Usually when uh, geologists take cores and, and you, know, you look at those stratigraphic layers, um, you have something like uh, 120 feet and it's only, and it's about uh, 980,000 years in 100 and so, some odd feet. So, you know, it's all kind of a lot of time crunched into a little space. The core that they pulled up has in the same area one day. So that, that means the de deposit of a lot of material that was over 100 feet, uh, and I guess that looks like 620 meters, and, uh, and it's just one day of material. So what was that day like? Well, it was not a great day, um, and uh, so we're going to just briefly describe what happened in those first few inches there is the first second, and uh, Jeff wrote this lovely text, our wonderful Jeff, an enormous, no hyperbole there, an enormous meteor impacted a shallow sea and explodes horribly, excavating a crater by shattering, melting, and vaporizing itself in the rock below. A large number of fish began to have a very bad day, um, and so, you know, well, I'm just going to keep going. The center of the crater bubbles is upward. You've seen that when things, you know, and then you get the uplift from the center, uh, spreading shocked crust and molten rock from the impact throughout the crater area. So there's this big rebound of stuff that comes up, and that's in that next, uh, next uh, boy, about looks like about 30 meters of, of the core, um, followed by a layer where the water was forced away because, of course, it excavated all the water out which then went in tsunamis out to other corners of the earth. Finally begins to surge back in, breaking the dams of the newly formed crater walls. And then finally, uh, by, by the end of that day, airborne and waterborne debris settled in the crater floor over the next day. So all the stuff that came up fell back to earth, and, and when it fell back, there's this friction, and then it, it generated a ton of heat. Uh, and uh, that started forest fires globally and, well, the rest is, uh, you know, climate history. Um, here's a little diagram from their paper showing you all the stuff. I like Jeff's interpretation better rather than just trying to point out the details here. Um, but I asked Jeff to tell me what, you know, on all, based on all those maps, the Earth looked like at the time. There it is, 65 million years ago. You can see that uh, there was still a little bit of the remnant from the north. But you can say, you know, hey, Florida, where's Florida? Uh, California is still sort of there-ish. But anyway, um, so when that happened, they found fossils of fish up in North Dakota. So I think also uh, Jeff filled in the gaps there. After the explosion in the Yucatan, the fish went flying um, <laughs> and flew up to, uh, up to North Dakota and elsewhere on the globe. So um, there and at, at ends the sad tale of the bad day for the dinosaurs. But it is remarkable that you would have a stratigraphic level layer that large that could detail the events of that day. So that's the real, that's the real highlight um, of that result.